Does gluten cause leaky gut in everyone? Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and I wanted to discuss a recent study that was published that was trying to answer the question, does gluten cause leaky gut even in those that don't have celiac disease or even in, in those that don't have non-celiac gluten sensitivity? So uh, a quick kind of primer on the issue, there's well-documented um, celiac disease, which is a full-blown clinical allergy to gluten. Those people clearly need to avoid gluten. There's some debate in regards to whether people who are termed non-celiac gluten sensitive actually have a problem with gluten or not. Um, and then a third group would be those that we would consider normal that, that don't notice any kind of um, negative changes with gluten. So this study administered gliadin, which is a component of gluten, to uh, a number of intestinal biopsies. So they took intestinal samples from the, the duodenum, the first section of the small intestine, and then they exposed these cells um, to gliadin. And what the researchers found was that everyone in, in all groups, from celiac to non-gluten, um, or non-celiac gluten sensitive to normal controls, all experienced increases in inflammatory markers and in markers of leaky gut. So while this study was performed in a cell line, it wasn't performed actually in humans, it was the cells of humans removed and isolated and, and then tested. So there's a, there's a bit of a weakness there. We need to be careful with how strongly we extrapolate. We're seeing some evidence here that I think reflects what some people in their own day-to-day -day lives have noticed, which is they feel better by not being on gluten. It might be less joint pain, less brain fog, what have you. So what is a practical kind of take home from this? Well, if you're suffering with any kind of health ailment, whether it be depression, fatigue, insomnia, joint pain, skin issues, bloating, gas, you might wanna try taking gluten out of your diet for a while, at least 30 days and then go through what's called the reintroduction. Bring gluten back in and see if you notice some of those negative symptoms that hopefully improve during the first 30 days return. If they do, then go back on the gluten-free diet for a little while, at least a few weeks, and try bringing gluten back in again. If after a few times you notice a consistent negative regression, then it's very likely that you have some kind of problem with gluten. So. Hopefully that helps people out there who are trying to sort out if they should try gluten-free or not. Research in this area is very exciting. I like to bring it back to a very practical position, which is give gluten-free a try, see if you feel better, go through a gluten reintroduction, see if you have a regression. If you do and you notice that relationship consistently a few times, then you probably have a gluten problem. If you go gluten-free and you notice no improvement, it's possible that there could be something in addition to gluten like a bacterial infection, a fungal infection, a bacterial overgrowth, or some other kind of gut disorder that may be uh, at the seat of your problems and why your gut's not able to improve its health after withdrawing gluten, which can be an inflammatory gut food for a lot of people. And if that's the case, you'll probably wanna get yourself to a skilled clinician in functional medicine that can help try to diagnose and treat whatever it is um, underlying along um, uh, or underlying that may prevent you from really responding to the gluten-free diet. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. This is Dr. Ruscio. Thanks.